put uh, today about open source. I love that. Completely agree with that. I think it's amazing. And I love that async is doing that. It's so yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things I'm always, uh, you know, well, it's like almost like just a just a slight reminder, you know, um, even though I kind of do it a little bit loud with the way I type, but um, it's, you know, it's I think it's a really I think it's really important because it's, you know, that's just how all this stuff began. And uh, if we wanted to keep growing in the same manner, and basically, you know, change the world like it did in the beginning, you know, I think that's the that's the proper way to do it. So I'm definitely happy that async uh, it's kind of like leading leading the charge with that because usually it takes you know it takes it takes a move like that from like you know asics pretty established now super rare is established now yeah. you know um so it, it's good to see moves like that being made yeah i don't know if you know about um zora as well they have uh they did like everything basically like open uh open source as well so you can basically like build your own auction house you can use your protocol and stuff like that it's pretty cool Wow, nice! I have yeah. to check that out. The, the yeah. space has gotten so big; it's so, it's so hard to keep track of. I know. It's so funny. I know. I know. Um, yes, Walt, we can hear you. Uh, I'm oh. just going to give like a brief introduction, and then you guys can just you know ask away. Um, and maybe Rob can like intro himself. Uh, I don't think you need that introduction to be honest. But oh, thank you so um, much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. Basically, just to give you a bit of context, um, Rob, uh, I mean, you know about it, like, you know, we've spoken about this, but the program is uh, in its first iteration. Uh, there are around 16 artists uh, joining the first, uh, the first cohort, let's say, which has been running from end of July uh, almost to, it's going to be running until the end of September, so it's 12 weeks. Cool. And um, yeah, like, basically, we've started off with, like, context on like crypto art like history so we had like art gnome uh the the dada so like judy and bea from power dada who were like really early on in blockchain and uh we then like kind of made our way through up until today where we had like a class on metaverse so we're basically like covering a lot of different aspects of the space which um which are you know very nuanced to to, to crypto art and to, to the ecosystem um and yeah, like to be honest, the con the the, the artists uh, are from all over the world. Like we, I think we're covering like worldwide so many different places. Like from the U.S. to Asia to Australia. Like Rose, who you see now, uh, I'll let you speak, Rose. But she's she has put an alarm on for for this AMA, and it's two two a.m. Is it Rose? Like it's really. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Um, so we're covering like a lot of different countries and it's been, it's been amazing, uh, so far. So I just wanted, uh, for people to hear from you, like you've been, you know, you've been pioneer and, um, in the space as well as, you know, uh, very, uh, I think, uh, unique, um, person. So I, I, I wanted to give a chance for people to, to ask questions and maybe for you as well to, yeah, you know, talk a little bit about, about what you've. Yeah, what you've Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, I mean in and the weirder the questions the better too. I'm I'm down to answer anything <laughs> you guys have. So, you know, shoot away for sure. Okay. Um feel free guys to start asking questions and maybe in the meantime like Rob if you want to give like a super brief um introduction maybe like kind of like I, I you know, we've chatted before when we did like the rare Pepe and the interview with Colburn, but maybe you know maybe a few people don't know how you kind of got into this. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, to yeah I, I mean, it's so funny because when I do the int introduction stuff, I'm, I'm starting to get more like lackadaisy with it. So like, <laughs> but basically, I mean, I got it. I mean, I was in this space since 2014. You know, I'm honestly like with everybody else, you, it started with, you know, the financial stuff and the speculative stuff and just trying to uh, experiment with the technology and, and see what, uh, what was possible. And at the time, there was a, lo a lot of uh, experimentation going on. I was doing uh, physical artwork and also music at the same time during that time. So, so literally just me during band practices and then like on the breaks doing my artwork and stuff and then doing crypto at the same time. So all these things kind of converged. And then 2016 was when uh, the Rare Pepe stuff happened. And, and really what it was, we were, we were doing a bunch of meme trading. And, uh, and that concept of the image with the token really, you know, uh, really hit it. 
And I mean, I, I, at the beginning, all of us kind of knew that we were we, we kind of hit, hit something pretty pretty miraculous. It, hey. It's an you know it's an abstraction. Can you hear me now? This, this, there we go. Yeah, it's it's like it, but it's so strong. Okay, cool. Um, with uh, the reflectability okay, aspect. great. New, uh, new, new and so I guess we'll get started. Good, uh, Thanks to everyone like for and, and, uh, for coming. Um, and behold, you know, seeing the landscape. About, uh, uh, you guys can see my screen, it's right? Done it. So uh, definitely blessed to even be a part of that. Uh, from that point on. Uh, from 2016 to you know 2018 ish, it was kind of like a it was kind of like a moment. It was like during the bear market of Bitcoin and stuff like that. So a lot of projects went into hiding and they started working and, and everything got kind of quiet for a little bit. And then uh, you know I got back into the scene around like you know uh, 2019. Found a uh, known origin, super rare, um, and you know found an outlet to to make artwork on my own personal level, you know, um, and just do my like my personal style of artworks and stuff. So, let's see. You guys, you guys can still hear me. Yeah, yeah, we can. Okay, cool. Yeah, and so, um, and from that point on, you know, uh, just kept moving through the space. You know, went from non origin to super rare to um, to rareable, and under some super circumstances, of course, and um, and uh, just basically kept trying new things out. And whenever I saw an opportunity to release work, um, maybe on a different platform that I thought might uh, cater to something else, I'd, I'd go there. So. Um, but yeah, sorry, that was a little bit long-winded uh, introduction, but that's so far, yeah, like my 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 background for sure. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had, um, I think Walt, it was you that asked if the rare Pepe wallet was <laughs> was open again, uh, like if the, if it could be open. I think Walt uh, messaged uh, Joe Looney <laughs> to ask, which yeah, is yeah, awesome. Yeah, I wanted to do something there, but it's closed now. So <laughs> yeah, I guess I yeah, it's just fan art or something. Yeah, they uh, they closed it a long time. It's actually kind of funny because I, I was actually making some pieces before uh, before I found out they closed, and then like I wanted to submit some pieces, and uh, like I found out I was uh, the project was shut down. I was like, oh no, you know. And uh, it, it's actually kind of funny because I took like one of the pieces and I actually submitted it to Super Rare, and uh, you know I, I I minted it there as like the the one Pepe that that I that I couldn't get released through the the actual project, you know. I said, well, it, it's, it's it's still sitting on my hard drive, so I might as well, you know, release it somehow. So, and luckily it was collected, so that was cool. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely closed for now. Well, well you, you never know, you know, so what the future holds. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, feel free to, uh, like, either unmute or if you don't feel like uh, unmuting, just type and I can uh, read out questions uh, for, for Rob, but yeah, go for it. Yeah, are you still like trading the rare peppers or buying or selling? Oh, am I still trading? You know, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, okay, because when that project happened, there were, we had a lot of artists that were involved um, worldwide. And, and really what it was is we had the Telegram room and everybody would just keep coming through the Telegram and, and maybe submitting work stuff like that and maybe uh, but, but it, it was so weird it was so it was really really decentralized like some some i mean most of the people i don't even know their identities half the time so um so to be able to trade now it's like to track down those individuals it's actually kind of hard um that some some people have kind of like almost like quote unquote come out of hiding you know and, and finally like have appeared on twitter and so forth and so so the trading is starting to happen and there's there's some instances where they're starting to release obviously uh, the cards on uh, on OpenSea. I think through Emblem Finance, they're doing, they're doing a lot of auctions and stuff now. Um, but as far as trading, I really haven't. But I haven't been getting like approached by people that want to collect. Uh, like I've I've had people like want to buy the whole wallet and stuff. Like I can't I can't sell the whole thing. It's too sentimental, you know. Um, yeah, so that that is happening now. It's starting to kind of bubble up. So who knows? There might be a resurgence of that for sure. Who were the, um, I guess, like for also for the people who are listening, like who were the people that were, I guess, more like active that are like now in the space as well? So uh, there's like you, there's Rare Skrilla, who else? Yeah, yeah, Skrilla. Um, there's one, uh, he's, he's not as active, but I mean, he's made some really cool pieces of uh, meme conscious. He helped, um, he actually helped Eleonora Breezy put the book together, which is the, the rarest book. They released uh, like a 300 edition. Um, it's almost like a Bible now, but it has it has all the cards that were ever minted, uh, a thousand plus 
I have, I'm lucky enough to have a copy. So it's like a, it's like a thick little tome, you know. And uh, sometimes uh, if if I get approached by people asking, you know, about cards, it's like I actually go through the book like a, like a librarian almost, like going through some of this stuff. And uh, it's 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 kind of funny because like going through the book, it's like a lot of memories, you know, that I just kind of forgot, you know, a lot of artists that submitted work and stuff. Um, but you know, honestly, like myself, Skrilla, um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, you know, honestly, I think us two with Joe Looney, um, Art Gnome, uh, never submitted any pieces, but he is obviously the cha champion of the whole of the whole thing. And thank God for that, because we need more people to to just uh, you know speak about the history of the stuff. So, but yeah, mostly Skrilla and myself. I'm trying to think right now of anybody else. Um, oh, um, Rare Designer, Rare Designer, uh, obviously. Um, he's gonna kill me <laughs> for not even mentioning that. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, I gotta shoot. I gotta I gotta figure that one out. Actually, that's a good question. Um, but yeah, a lot a lot are scattered. There's there's we had artists in you know uh, South America, Japan, um, UK. It was all over the place, you know. And and from time to time, people would 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 come in. They'd submit a piece or two, and then maybe we wouldn't hear from them for a while. So very scattered, you know. Amazing. I think we have a question for Rose um, in the chat. She says, after trying so many, do you have a preferred platform or marketplace? Preferred platform? Um, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, okay, I will say this, you know, even though I was booted from Super Rare, I have to hand it to them. I think they're doing something right now. Like they, they have some uh, announcements. Yeah, I saw doing. it actually. What a, what a, yeah, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a wrong timing. I didn't know they were doing it now, but oh no, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, but I think they're they're starting to democratize more of the curation, which is good because I think that was that was our disagreement in the beginning. So so they're moving to that they're moving to that um, that realm, and and I'm happy that they are doing that. Um, so I would say, you know, honestly, super rare is cool. I mean, honestly, too, known origin. David Moore is. He's one of my favorite people in the space because he uh, he really 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 cares about um, the artists and the artwork and he has kind of like a, a background in the arts as well. Sometimes I think he's made a couple pieces too on his own. Um, and the first time I, I I heard about David or, or just like when when Nona Origin was going around, was was starting to grow a little bit like David did something which I thought was really cool and it like showed me like his soul kind of like he 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 went to some art fair. And he snuck in with a, with a projector of like known origin artwork, you know? And he like put the projector in there and like started projecting the artwork from, his, from, from the site onto one of the walls and stuff, you know? So he, like he has like the street art like kind of mentality um, kind of ingrained in him. So, so his passion for the arts is, uh, is, is super, super genuine. And, and ha he, he obviously knows a lot about like, you know, art history and so forth. So known origin is cool too. Uh, Rarible is interesting because it's it's a different beast, you know. Like Rarible, like for, when I was using it, um, I already knew kind of going in that it had more of like a collectible mentality. So, um, so if you're into like the collectible thing, it definitely caters to to your style for sure. The way it's just developed and everything. I mean, you see uh, certain projects really blowing up there, um, and sometimes it's a breeding ground for them to go into super rare or known origin. It's like a graduation almost. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, like my, my favorite two are, are the original ones, the known origin and super rare. They, they've kept the, uh, the, the soul of like crypto art from its very beginnings, like uh, intact, you know? So, um, yeah, I hate to play favorites, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think Scott says, uh, I saw you were on SS, is it screensaver world? Um, screensaver world, sure. Yeah, that's hype. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I will say one thing. You know what? My, my brain is not working this morning. I, I will say Hick at Nunk right now is my current favorite. Okay. I'm just going to say that right now because uh, um, being able to release anonymously there, um, their platform is like super cool. I like how it's almost like you feel like you're a hacker using it because there's so much, there's so many weird, like the, the platform is just, it's different, you know? Uh, and it, I think that caters to a lot of artist mentality too. They like the fact that the platform caters to possibly their their weird personality traits, you know. So, um, so yeah, that's my current favorite. So, sorry. <laughs> Love that. Um, I think I have I have a question, which maybe is something that can be helpful for for you know for the audience. But it's like, 
I, I get asked this a lot about like, you know, how should I structure my work? Like what I should, what should I release? What if it's like editions or like multi editions or one-on-ones? And, you know, you've been somebody that I think has experimented and keeps experimenting with everything, like has no rules and just, you know, goes with, you know, what do you feel like doing? And I'd love for you to maybe like, yeah, have, you know, just have your take on this. Like, what is your take on um, these preset rules, this idea of scarcity and, and all of that, you know, talk? Yeah. So, so here's another like, uh, like big debate with scarcity, you know, like for me, like I, I've had disagreements with some, like some members of Super Rare about it and Art Gnome too, actually, you know, Art Gnome and myself kind of are in the same, uh, on the, like the team abundance, you know, kind of, kind of deal. Yeah. But um, r- rarity to me is, I think, I think people are l- looking at rarity like, oh, you know, um, I should make less pieces Right, um, you know, I'm only going to make maybe, maybe, uh, you know, a couple this month, and that's about it. And um, I, I think it, for me personally, like, I can't do that because my brain is just so neurotic. Like, I have to keep making stuff, so um, so it definitely does not work with my personality. Um, but like scarcity, scarcity to me means like when you think of any artist, you know, you think of maybe like their top five pieces, you know. Um, Primarily because, like, like humans, we can't really like go through the whole catalog of every artist, you know. Like, I can't like sit here and like say like every every Basquiat piece, you know, and go down the list, right? But usually, there's like a couple of them that stick out. And so, um, so for me, I think rarity to me means like the pieces of your whole repertoire that 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 go like the cream of the crop that really just float to the top. And and I think that's primarily the pieces that you make. That really like hit a vibe with with like the crypto culture, NFT culture, what have you. And so, so for me, it's like I look at like uh, scarcity in that manner. So for me, I, I make pieces like all the time. I don't care about um, uh, you know over inflating the market because you, you never know. It could be that one piece that, that hits. It could be your like you know one hundredth or two hundredth or three hundredth piece or maybe sixteenth piece. And, and that will be the one that really strikes a chord. And then um, a lot of coll- other collectors see that and then they start going through your old catalog. So, you know, I've seen artists plenty of times in the space, you know, they'll make pieces and they'll get really sad about it. Like, oh, you know, I haven't sold anything um, and they keep going. And some people, you know, they, they, may, they might dip out and, and quit, you know, but there are some artists that keep going and going and going. And then all of a sudden there's like that one piece that just like um, some collector just, you know, goes absolutely bonkers over it. And then when they acquire it, all of a sudden there's, you know, other collectors that look and say, hey, you know what, I'm, let, me, let, me, let me check this artist out a little bit more. And then they start going through your back catalog and next thing you know, you see your um, other pieces start getting picked up. So, um, so for me, like uh, limiting yourself um, because you're not selling, I think it's, I think that's limiting, you know, because um, you never know your, your best work might be around the corner. So, um, yeah, and I've seen that plenty of times, you know, um, artists you know like and I'll, you know for me i collect as well so sometimes you know like um i'll see i'll see a certain artist and i'll, I'll buy you know maybe a piece from them and um and some, sometimes collectors like to promote that they buy your work you know they'll do that on twitter so I, I i sometimes do that myself because like it helps the artist as well so like i'll buy the piece and you know and i'll display it and like you know check out you know so and so and and there's other collectors that see that and then um they, they kind of go swarming in and, and, and investigate and the next thing you know um, they start selling, which is great. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. Like scarcity to me, it, to me, it means like your your best of pieces out of your whole you know catalog, which is like a lifetime. You know, I mean, for me, it's like I don't I don't know what my be- my best pieces in the, in the future might be. I can't, you know, I don't have the crystal ball uh, to figure that one out. But I think it's it's like the people that decide that. You know, like I have a couple pieces that keep a, you know people keep reminding me of, like the trash can, like the sixty four gallon toter. Obviously, it keeps going <laughs> amazingly i don't know how that how, how that works but it keeps going and the whole trash art thing but um, um but there's other pieces too that i didn't expect um that would hit as hard as they did um or you know performance pieces and so forth but um, i'm starting to see that um they're kind of still permeating the space in, in a sense you know so i'd say just consider you know your work um just you know focus on your work and focus like 
um, you know, just just making an impact with it. You know, that's the most important I think for any artist to have is is to have that one piece that just you know, it just it just strikes a chord and puts a notch in the culture and the timeline and so forth. So maybe it's it would be um, fun and interesting because I know that a few people here have not been in the space super long to know your story about why you got kicked off super rare yeah um i'll, I'll try to make it as simple as possible but uh <laughs> you know i i you know i'm i i have another cohort uh max osiris he's another artist on super rare we both were removed but uh, a lot of it was due to copyright infringement um you know terms of service violations and so forth but but he got removed first and because of that like i i just you know, I'm coming from, you know, OG Bitcoin world, you know, op open source, decentralized. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of copyright law um, in the space. Never, you know, Everybody knows that now at this point. But uh, uh, I'm a big champion of like open source ideas. The very beginnings of this, this whole network started with that. And um, you know, put it this way, we wouldn't have Ethereum if we didn't have the Bitcoin code as open source, you know, if it was closed source, then we wouldn't have any, we, would, we wouldn't have uh, thousands of different blockchains, you know, operating in their own um, manner and so forth. So when I saw him get removed, I, uh, you know, I, I it, it took, it took, it was like, it was like a brother getting kicked off the bus or something, you know, and, uh, and so I, you know, I started making some reactionary art to that. Uh, I made a couple pieces talking about copyright, citing sources, but then, you know, uh, I made this, this this infamous trash can that was glitched out, and I just uh, call it six four gallon toter. And um, basically, super rare thought I you know jacked the uh, photo from uh, from Home Depot, and so that was that was the terms of the violations that I got removed. <laughs> and so after that, um, there was an article written by uh, Coin Telegraph about you know just copyright in space, uh, gatekeeping, and so forth. And um, and from that point on, a lot of artists just kind of like. Um, took to the call and um, started making pieces of uh, almost like remixes or maybe tribute pieces or every single one of those artists though I, I got to thank them for doing that because um, it means a lot for for sure for me it means it means the world that they uh, they took some type of uh, emotion out of that and they felt like they needed to express themselves uh, but yeah I mean it, a lot of people have their own interpretations of it, which is interesting, you know? And so, um, I mean, for me, it was a little, it, it was, you know, personal. It was kind of like rage art in a sense. It was very, you know, instant, instantaneous, like very just impulsive. Um, and even to this day, like, I don't even know, like it just, it just was one of those weird anomalies that just happened. And so, um, so I, after that, you know, it just kind of grew from there and you, you just see all these artists making remixes of that. And, and that's, uh, and that's how I went. So yeah, that's a little short history of it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's 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 funny because copyright is such a it's such like a, a a black and white topic. Like I've had you know conversations as well with um, you know a few different artists. Like either you're completely like against it or you just don't care and actually you know you think that it's that it's just, just something that has no no place and no space especially within this ecosystem um so like second realm for example you know we've had conversations who i know is you know part of like the trash artists and um we've had conversations about this and you know he obviously has very similar thoughts to you and yeah me too to be honest like i don't really see copyright as something that should be like in crypto art i don't know um it's, it's interesting yeah and I, I think you know um i said it a while back but it was it was more like a mental exercise but i i just was um i was just putting out there that um you know with, with smart contract uh innovations and and how you know artists are i mean the the secondary market uh, innovations that we've had is it's just so profound and like how it's working for everybody. And so, um, for, so for me, it's like uh, worrying about copyright in this space is like almost like a waste of time because you can actually be worrying about um, how to innovate, you know, smart contract technology further, you know, um, as far as making sure the artist gets paid. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's just like, yeah, it's one of those things. It's, it's, it's almost like a regressive thing to think about that. It's like, I, I would just, divert my attention to 
um, keep building in the space and keep innovating and seeing how artists can benefit more um, on their releases and so forth. And so, uh, yeah, I'm more worried about, yeah, like the smart contracts and what else they can do. You know, um, you know, I mean, right now there's, there's so many different things going on in the metaverse, you know, and how artists can be uh, compensated. And I, I'd say just focus your energy in, in that direction instead of uh, worrying about maybe an archaic law, you know. And, and the speed of, you know, the speed of crypto art um, is another hindrance too. Um, things move so fast. It's like it's hard to even, catch, even if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to maybe in, enforce some type of copyright on some people, you know, it's, the space is so maniacal that it's like, it's almost like you're uh, trying to catch air almost, you know? <laughs> so, um, so I'd say, yeah, just, just uh, focus on, um, you know, the smart contract technology, what we can do, uh, maybe other innovations in the DeFi space that can um, bootstrap to, to artists and so forth. And I mean, for example, like, you know, I made one of those, my own uh, trash social token, you know, and that, um, that's a kind of interesting because, um, starting a starting your own currency is is extremely difficult. Like it's just it's like a, it's like watering a plant every day. It's the weirdest thing to 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 even attempt. But um, luckily for mine, like mine is like still alive and like still moving around the space and stuff. And people are you know um, you know selling their artwork for trash tokens and stuff like that. But um, but that's another uh, Starting a current social currency, I think that's another art form in its own right. Because uh, for me, like I've had like difficulties doing that. Like sometimes it just completely dies, and all of a sudden it comes back. And and um, so there, there's a lot of things that you can do in this space to to um, I don't know to um, like entrepreneurship for an artist. You know, you can you can do a lot of new new things that um, that were never you know able to be even conceived before. So absolutely. Um, um, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Kalin. Hi. Um, I had a question about, um, so you mentioned like the Cointelegraph article where, and I think they compare you to um, like Mar Marcel Duchamp and say that like you're like a conceptual artist and um, you've also like burned crypto punks, which you've described as like performance art and you kind of do glitch art in this. I feel like, um, I don't know, I feel like you kind of defy definition almost so I was wondering how I would love to hear how you what you think of yourself as an artist and um, if there are any like ideas or values or um, questions that drive drive your work yeah well thank uh, the Kaylin right I don't want to mispronounce mispronounce your name but it's, it's uh Callan. yeah Callan, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th and thank you so much for that compliment. It means a lot. Um, yeah. As far as uh, the questions, like I, I constantly ask myself in this space, is like, you know, uh, like non fungible token, like art, like what is that? You know, like what 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 is that uh, abstraction? You know. Um, and at first, at first, it was um, in the beginning. You know, all we were doing is merging. You know, JPEGs. To, to the token, right? And then and then all of a sudden, like as as time progressed, then we saw people doing gifts. And when that first happened, I was like, oh my God, that's right, we can do gifts too. Like what? You know what I mean? And um and then it kept it kept growing and then it kept expanding. And then you had the galleries and stuff. And we started doing, you know, um, 3D sculptures and so forth. And and I think from that point on it, it really got to the point that people started realizing that the token is is the, the token is more like a timestamp. Like it's it's like a you're putting a notch in a timeline, right? And whatever um, abstraction you can put on top of that token is is the art in, in a sense. So um, so for me, like I think, you know, like I, I ask myself, you know, what what can you put on top of the token that that can be considered art, you know? So like when I do like like quote unquote like performance art and stuff or or um, just just any type of weird uh, approach, it's really just trying to like um, test that abstraction, like. Um, you know, am I, am I capturing type, some type of memory onto the blockchain itself, you know? Um, and so, because the token is there just to say that this happened at this point in time. And so for me, I, I think that like, you know, like burning a crypto punk, that was, you know, that was just, uh, you know, that was a notch in the timeline per se. So um, yeah, yeah, that, that's the question I pretty much ask myself constantly is just, you know, um, what can I do when I mint the token? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what what is the memory going to be uh, attached to that token at the time? So, um, yeah. So, I mean, for me, I, I look at the, the you know the blockchain is a big record keeping uh, network. So, 
um, what uh, what memory do you want to have notched in there? And so that's that's my question. I constantly ask myself. Um, we have a question from Nitika as well. So what's your take on those who don't come from an art background, but because of NFTs do so well by creating whatever? Um, yeah, okay, so that's <laughs> that is an art that's an art artist frustration question. I totally like understand that because I'm I'm self-taught myself. Like I, I I've taught, you know, myself art, music, um, even trying to like publish books. Uh, I'm very like I just can't do the lesson thing. It's just not my not my thing. It's just I feel like I, I kill it by doing it. Some people are are good at that, and I just for me I just I just can't. Um, but yeah, it is frustrating when you see um, people that aren't necessarily artists come into the space and they start doing very well or whatever. And and it's like one of those things. It's just like it's so hard. Like even even in this space to to, to try and control. But what I will say is that um, right now. Um, the, the power an artist can wield uh, to, to, to make a name for themselves, to make uh, income for, this, for themselves is by far leaps and bounds better than what it was. So for me, I'd say like, like we, we we're taking like large steps forward, which is great. Um, we're, we're definitely still going to have like, you know, there's, there's always going to be bad actors or, you know, fakes and space and stuff like that. And, and sometimes just, you have to deal with it. And like, for, for me, it's like, I have some like artistic snobbery and like music snobbery in my own heart too. Like, like I'm, I'm no saint, you know, sometimes I'm like, how does that even happen? But, um, but what I say is just, you know, um, just learn as much as you can about what like the blockchain innovations that are happening um, and, and find stuff in, in the spaces that like really vibe to you that, that might um, be able to bootstrap to your artwork. And so you can kind of create like a merge of some sort and then you know just i mean honestly just have fun and, and just kind of avoid all that noise because because now it's like you know even for me like on twitter like there's a lot of noise going on and sometimes i get caught up in it and like sometimes it takes me away from my work so i'd say just focus on the work and focus like i mean just you just hit it hard you know like and, and, it, and it pays off because sometimes it doesn't feel like it'll pay off but but you'll find like um something that happens in the space that you were a part of and all of a sudden it, it takes off for you so um, I'd say just just focus on your innovation. Um, try to tune out as much noise as possible. Um, and you know, and it, it always is good to engage though in, in Twitter and stuff because a lot of collectors, um, they're they are there. You know, so you know you do have to. Uh, Twitter is the number one communication protocol, like really for for crypto in general. So I mean, that's where I do most of my um, like you know releases and so forth. So. But yeah, just try to tune that out because I, I I see it too, and I and I feel for you because I'm the same way. Like, um, you know, it's like how did how did that happen? You know, how did, you know, and it's and mo some of it's just marketing. You know, some people are just really good at that, and like I'm I'm not that great. Like people say, like I'm I do good. I'm like I don't even know what you're talking about. Like I'm just trying to run my account, but like yeah, it's just you know just just uh, just have fun in the space. Don't worry about all that stuff, and just try to like. You know, focus on your work as much as possible and, and yeah, just enjoy it. Great. Um, Nitika says, thank you so much for answering. Uh, I think I missed a question uh, before from Scott, which says, what is your favorite type of art to collect as NFTs? <laughs> My favorite type of art? Oh, man. Um, well, I mean, it's it's one of those things. I, I always try to look for just something that you know. It's like I mean, it's hard to say, but it's like something you've never seen before. Um, but also, it's it's kind of weird though because I, I try to look for for art that speaks in the crypto sense. I guess um, it, it, it's kind of like a weird. Um, it's, I don't know. It's kind of a weird reason that I have, but it's like this. There's like some type of artwork that gets made that really just is a nice blend of like the artist and the crypto culture and I, I, I tend to keep an eye out for that I don't I can't put my finger what that is it's like there's a certain type of um, aesthetic that I like that I like it's not like saying like you know put a Bitcoin logo on the, on the art piece because I can't stand that either like for me personally like um, there's this it's just not my thing really but um, and it's kind of maybe it's too too blatant or too too in your face you know um, but there's like artists that, you know, in the space that 
they do their own thing, but it's like they, they're able to jive with the crypto culture at the same time. Um, and it's like they, it's like weird. It's like they can kind of know like it's, they're speaking the language, but they're not they're not saying anything, but it's there, you know. So I, I try I try to look for that. Um, and, and usually it's it's because they're they're doing something in the space that is like pushing it forward, I guess, you know. Um, and so. I mean, I love seeing tons of artwork, but I love seeing even more when I see the artwork being used in a sense that's um, pushing the crypto space forward, uh, technologically speaking. So, like, I'm a futurist at hand. So, like, for me, whenever I see that stuff, I, I really, you know, I really, really start to, you know, get excited about it. So, I can see there's a few people uh, typing. So, I'll read it out uh, once. Once, oh, here it is. Um, so Andrea is asking, um, that's exactly what I was thinking to ask. What are the characteristics that better fit with crypto art space in terms of artwork? Oh man, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> if I was gonna joke, I'd say like, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, like the, the moving gifts and like just, there's like a certain cyber element that's just like it's gotta ha it's gotta be moving, you know. And I hate to say that because there's a lot of there's a lot of I make a lot of still art, you know. Uh, uh, if you like look at my like some of my back, like just a lot of my old older work is like just just stills. And um, but yeah, I mean uh, the biggest thing was back in the day was like moving artwork, GIF artwork, you know. Um, there was a point in Super Rare where literally it was like everybody was just going full on GIF mode, you know, everybody was making uh, moving artwork. Um, I think the only one that really like was more staunchly against it was like Max Osiris. Like he made like one piece that was like uh, animation and that was it. He's just, it's just not his deal, you know. But, um, but for me, like, I mean, I love it, you know, I mean, to be able to just have, you know, you walk into a house and, you know, there's a futuristic art frame with a moving piece, you know, I mean, that's like, it's kind of that vibe that everybody wanted to go to, you know, it was new, it was exciting. So, so yeah, I mean, definitely animation artwork is, is one of the biggest aesthetics, um, you know, uh, in the, in the space. Um, but I think now it's, it's starting to merge into like, you know, virtual reality, virtual reality, augmented reality, um, maybe sculpture work in, in those realms too. Like, um, I definitely dabbled in that recently, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think when it gets more into the metaverse itself, you know, there's going to be like tons of like things you can do that you can't do physically, um, you know, making just huge installations and stuff that, where, you know, people, people can go in there and get completely immersed. Um, so I think possibly in the future aesthetics with, um, you know, just like integrating the metaverse with your work um, will be kind of interesting, you know. Absolutely. Um, I always like think myself, you know, what's the difference? But like, it, is crypto art like a genre of art? Like I ask myself this, I think it is in, in many ways. Uh, but at the same time, like, I think like NFTs are a medium. So essentially what, you know, any art can be an NFT. It doesn't have to be crypto art. But yeah, um, I don't want to over overtake the conversation. But there's another question from Rose. Like I saw you were thinking of not minting on Hecat Nunc until you've got some new work. Have you had any ideas? <laughs> the anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it's funny. I'm literally like my. I'm like I. I'm going absolutely crazy because I can't think of anything right now. Like I, you know, I I, got, I get artist block. You know, uh, with certain things. Like I'm I'm doing some stuff right now. I'm like in the Central Land, but like I'm still thinking how I'm gonna. You know. Because I, I, I love picking them so much, I want to I want to make a new, new series there, but it, it hasn't hit me yet, you know. And sometimes it's it's kind of weird. Like sometimes you got to work on other things, um, for 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 that idea to pop up. So when that time comes, then I'll then I'll then I'll release a new series. But for right now, yeah, I, like I'm at zero. <laughs> I don't even know. So yeah, I I go through that all the time. Like just a big lull, you know. Like what the heck am I gonna do, you know? Um, so but yeah, I definitely want to release some more work on there but it's just it's gotta it's gotta feel right you know absolutely rose uh, says you can force well, it yeah that's sorry walt go ahead oh yeah uh, what, what's your experience with OpenSea, and would you recommend it like uh, is there any benefit like with going like with known origin makers place or instead of OpenSea? 
Yeah, I mean, um, see, in, in known origin, you you have a little bit of more. Um, you know, you, you get admitted to the gallery. It's kind of nice, you know, to be able to say that and so forth. Uh, there are some artists that have gotten gotten into known origin and they've been starting to really do good. Like I just saw like Food Mask who like got in there and he's releasing, you know, his his portraits in there. Um, and he's starting to do really well there. He's starting to take off, which is great. Um, yeah, I mean, Open Sea right now it's getting so big. Um, like I, I can see the frustration with some artists that are releasing on there and they're not seeing any action or I don't know collections and so forth. Um, there, there's a weird chemistry of using Twitter in combination with your releases, um, and I think you got to work all those angles to get seen, you know. Um, and honestly, like you definitely like you know hashtag NFT, hashtag NFT, NFT community, all that stuff just to get it out there and to be seen, you know. Um, but I say, you know. With with Open Sea, it's you know they do a great job, but now I'm starting to see it's getting really big. So it, I think now it's like nice to just be able to find platforms that really cater to um, to what you're doing. Um, I mean, it, it's it's so hard to answer that question, you know, because um, I think like with Open Sea, it's just ah, it's getting it's getting, it is getting big now. I can understand the frustration with some artists that are trying. You know what I mean? I I definitely get it. You know. Um, and I, I'd say right now, like Twitter is kind of the battleground to get to to to, uh, to get seen and to, and to get uh, um, and to get your work out there. So I use that in conjunction with OpenSea. So whenever I release anything on there, you know, I obviously put on Twitter and collectors see that and so forth. And, um, so there's there's a weird like uh, combination of the two. Um, now, known origin, you know, what what they're providing is, you know, obviously they. You know their their account on Twitter is big, so um, you know when you release pieces there, you know they'll they'll promote it for you. So there is that that, that happens. There is you know, the, the curatorial uh, element does help in that sense. You know, yeah, because Op OpenSea doesn't you know they don't they don't really promote that much work. You know, because they're they're too busy doing so many different things. You know, so I mean back in the day they did, but yeah, yeah, I was about to say that they probably don't help you out in Twitter. As much as no one origin probably does. Yeah, yeah, and you know it's it's like um, you know platforms now. I'm starting to see that you know um, if you if you get on one of the platforms and you you make a nice body of work, um, you know them them putting it on their account um, definitely helps. You know, so because they're you know like Rarible, I think shoot Rarible's Twitter following is like insane now. Um, you know, Nifty Gateway, Super Rare, all of them have passed the 100K mark. So, so you know, um, getting on one of those it definitely helps. It definitely helps to be seen. You know, um, whereas you know, Open Sea is just mostly it's about like you know what you know how big they're expanding. You know, <laughs> so you know, uh, so I definitely definitely think it's it'd be good for the artists at least to find a platform that that fits their mold and um, and release on there and, uh, and and work it that way. That way, that platform can help them kind of be seen a little bit more. Um, let me see if there's more questions. One sec. Um, MapLab asks, how did your famous style of Twitter communication came out? Tweeting in all caps. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that was that's that was like uh, just an inside joke. I uh, when I was doing like the the rare Pepe stuff in the beginning, and like I was I was beta testing some actual I, I was beta testing some games back in the day too. Like when like uh, Spells of Genesis, there was a one of the first. One of the first blockchain games um, on the Bitcoin network, um, and they were doing you know itemization with the you know like the card map merged with the token and so forth. And um, and I, honestly, I was just beta testing it because I thought it was interesting. I was like, oh okay, this is like the, the you know this is the gaming future. So let me just you know give this a shot and just check it out. Um, <clears throat> but um, but I was on this exchange called Poloniex back in the day, and uh, they got they had this thing called the Troll Box, and like. Um, it's basically just a bunch of people that would kind of gather there and like we'd be, you know, doing crypto stuff and then we'd go back on the exchange and, you know, we'd be basically just, you know, talking amongst each other. But from time to time I use, you know, the, the caps and I get banned for it. So like I, I get banned for 24 hours on it. And so from that point on, it was more of just like a joke. I would just go on there and type in all caps and get banned 24 hours again. So like, 
uh, next thing you know, like it went from a joke to like, uh, like became the Ban Am champion and this and that. It was just it was a it was total total inside joke, but it just kept it because people started like saying, oh, you know, it's weird seeing you type in lowercase. So it just got it kind of stuck, and then just kept going through and it kept going through and kept going through, and then I just brought it out to Twitter. I said, you know, why not? And so and so for yeah, it's more of just an inside joke for a lot of people from the back in the back in the old days, you know. But um, yeah, it's definitely like hilarious to me, you know. And and also too though. I actually have some weird philosophy behind it too, because um, there's like so much, there's like so much hate for 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 the caps, right? Like it's almost like a psychological thing. Like I I started realizing I'm like, man, people get really mad about this stuff. Like if you type in all caps, they just, they're like, oh, it hurts looking at it. It hurts looking at those letters, you know? I'm like, like technically, that's just. It's just like someone entrained you to say that, like, like, uh, what, what, why is it loud? You know, like Japanese characters are just as large. Right. So it's like this weird, like psychological thing when you see like a small letter thing and then an increase in letter size. And then like all of a sudden it's loud to you in your head, you know? So for me, it's like, I, I almost started like, it just, it, I noticed that some people were just like super chill with it. And then there were some people that really just could not take it. And I'm like, I'm like, Hmm, it just, kind of kind of interesting to me so yeah i don't know that was just another observance of it but yeah slight character change you know but also you know so but yeah that's pretty much it nothing too fantastical about it but yeah that's that's where it came from it's funny because i think like um if you see it from the outside like some like i completely understand uh and agree with what you what you what you're saying like sometimes like when you see caps lock it's like um you're screaming but it's just because like, we're used to like you get it it's, it's like it's something big right but really it's just writing like i don't know yeah. it's funny yeah it's well yeah i was i was you know the, the, i was i was coming up with a joke like it's you know when people say oh uh why are the all caps and i just say it's old roman script and like i took a look at like the past and and you know in the beginning it was all caps you know they used to write on stone tablets it was all it was all capital letters right and then I, I'm not sure if it if this is like legitimate or not, but I, I heard from a go around that like lowercase was invented because it was easier to write faster, right? And so for me, I'm like, well, we have keyboards now, so we don't need we don't have that issue anymore, right? So, <laughs> but okay. um, just just more jokes, you know, as as time went on. But yeah, it's just just kind of a funny like funny, funny experiment to be honest. So yeah, and also you know sometimes like when um like from the outside like i you know I, yesterday when i told uh, this group that we were doing the uh, ama um like it's it's funny because like from the outside like if somebody doesn't know you like you would you would say oh you know like rob ness like you know he writes all in caps like obviously like you, must be, you know like an angry like human being and actually like you're the most chilled and like you know genuine sweet like person and it's just so Thank funny you, how right. like some like a uh, like the perspective changes on what you know is like a complete nonsense you know it's it's funny yeah yeah i'm like i'm like that one piece of sushi that like is really like i'm not going to taste that at all and like and then you finally have it and you're like it's not actually that bad i mean it's still kind of kind of funky but you know it's not as bad as i thought so yeah that was kind of interesting how that worked out uh, thank you for the compliment, compliment as well <laughs> i try but um, Rose is asking, I'm really interested in the performance art you do. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, um, Twitter is interesting because um, now that we have, you know, the blockchain where we're doing, you know, crypto art and stuff like the, that, that question of like, you know, what is crypto art to me? It's like, okay, well, what, what can we do in, in Twitter? Because for me, <clears throat> Twitter is like, the reason why Twitter I bring it up a lot is because it's actually um, back in the day it was a lot of the really large personalities in the crypto world you know they all started on Twitter around 2014 you know that was for some reason everybody gravitated there and I think it was because um, how fast the communication is and um, for projects and stuff to keep up with each other so so you know um, a lot of these um, these people had um, their accounts, they grew, so they became really native to the platform. There's no reason for them to leave because everybody else kind of grew up with each other. And so um, so Twitter became this, you know, town square of sorts for, for crypto. So for me, I, I consider it like 
this big city where everybody's there just yelling out loud, you know, in the streets, you know. So for me, I, I uh, it, it, for me, I look at it like you know, street art in a sense, you know, what, what can you do inside of Twitter um, using the blockchain to um, uh, to make maybe possibly crypto art inside of this thing. And so for me, I, I think uh, like doing some performance art on there was was fun to do. Like uh, when I did, you know, I did the digital art bitch performance for about a week and it was like a it was like, a, well, digital art chick, you know, everybody knows her account, you know, and um, and at first when I did it, um, I basically mimicked her account and um, basically cranked it to 11 and just went full on like her 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 um, personality style. I took it to the limit pretty much. And uh, and uh, it, it turned into like berating people, which is like people are like, why did you do that? You know, but it was really just the personality just cranked up. I just was doing the, it was a, more of like an act. But um, it was interesting doing that because um, I started getting more engagement, which is like kind of a letdown. I was like, well, people just like having tough smack to talk to them, you know, like what's going on here? But it was more like a test and anything. So doing that performance, you know, I, I was asking myself, I go, I go, okay, so I'm I'm literally acting, you know, with my account. Um, so how do I, you know, how do I notch this in the timeline on blockchain, right? So um, for me, it's like, you know, you have to do an NFT of some sort. So I, you know, I took like a crypto punk and I made it black and white, and uh, you know, I actually was the avatar that I was using. And so, um, you know, I released it on Known Origin, and you know, I, I put the details of what happened that week um, and everything that I did. You know, and, and I think maybe my observations in that. Um, like I really, I released a letter too after the performance, like about a week long. I, I, I it was kind of hard to do. I was like, man, it's a straight week. I'm just me acting like totally weird but um but at the end you know i i typed up a, like the performance letter and stuff like that but i but that minted the avatar as like maybe a notch in the timeline of like the performance so um and then um you know at the end of the at the end of the week i like had a giveaway and you know whoever you know whoever got it you know pretty much owns it um i think anonymous nobody has has the avatar right now um but for me it was like you know how do i capture a performance inside of twitter Right. So um, so for me, like doing the avatar was the most, um, I think, like aesthetically appropriate thing, because, you know, the profile pick culture right now is like is absolutely insane. So um, so for me, I think that was the most proper way to like uh, capture it. Um, I'm trying to think of what other things I did. I mean, on Twitter, like there was a there was a weird uh, thing about, you know, um, uh, you know, tokenizing tweets. Um, there was a it was kind of like here today, gone tomorrow kind of thing. Not too many people do it, but sometimes it reappears. Um, but like, you know, for a while, a lot of us were making like, you know, um, artwork on our tweet, you know? So a lot of people were doing like assy style artwork and stuff. And then um, people would actually collect those tweets. So the, so the artwork is now what was now on Twitter. Um, so there was like a lot of performances being done and or, or, yeah, experimentations being done. And, um, and we started to see that like, hey, you know, Twitter is like a, like almost like a, like a mental street of some sort, you know. Um, and how can we tag this up, really? Like uh, for me, it's like uh, how do we spray? I, I think I, I made a tweet saying, "Oh, hey, like, you know, where's your mental spray can? Like, let's go. You know, like this, this is Twitter. Let's 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 make some crypto art here, you know." And so, um, yeah. So those are my thoughts, at least uh, as far as performance art inside of like the social media context. Um, and I still think it's, you know, it's fun to do. I've been, I've been thinking that maybe I can do another one, but you know, what, what type of personality I want to do, but, um, that, that's definitely the future for sure. But, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I think we have a few minutes left, but I think maybe, um, unless there's some questions, Walt, I see you're muted. Do you want to ask a question? Uh, I well, I had one question still. Uh, like, what would yeah. you consider um, like the most important thing, like for emerging or artists like us, like doing collabs or uh, besides, like of course, doing new work. Most important thing, um, I, you know, what I'd say is um, there's a lot. Of, okay, there's a lot of trends going on in this space, and it happens really quick, um, and. I think my number one thing, and, and it's something that I fight too as well. And I think that's like, 
it's like you you have your own type of practice you know every artist has their own type of practice but sometimes you can get like you, you can almost jump on the train of a fad that's happening and then you find yourself making something that you necessarily might not have made um if it's it's easy to do you know it's easy to, it's easy to jump on maybe like doing like oh i'm gonna make ten thousand generative art pieces you know and like you know like i got caught in that too i haven't done anything yet but like um but you know that's that's a, that's a, like almost like a fad of the day you know i'm not sure how long that's gonna last you know the um the, the ten thousand generative uh, project kind of deal um so there's a lot of things that are going on in this space and sometimes you can get pulled and say oh you know well this is where um this is where i should go and and, and then you find that the reason why you did it was because of money and and that's when for me it's like that's that's my big fight all the time. Like, I do not want to like have myself pulled some type of fad because like the market is just there at the moment. And so, because you ask yourself at the end of the day, and you, you, you know what the answer is. You know, like if you look in the mirror and you ask yourself, you're like, yeah, I would not have done that. You know, and that's always hard when you when you come to grips with that. So for me, I say do not like try to jump on a trend as fast as you see him because it could be gone by the next week. Because crypto time is like insane. Like, you know, a week long is like a month long. It's like a mental universe. It's like things move so quickly. So um, I'd say just, you know, keep a straight arrow with, 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 with what you're doing. And, um, and if you see something that might, might help, that, that's cool. But like, don't, don't totally change your style to fit a certain um, fad of the week, you know, so. Yeah, I, I agree like 100%. And it's, it's pretty bit tricky for a person like me because I, I I kinda want to try out everything and, and do everything because I'm so curious but yeah I'm the same way. Yeah like I mean for me like I'm like my biggest you know like artistic heroes and mu music heroes have always been like ones that have changed constantly. Um because I feel like for me I think just me personally it's like the most difficult thing I think for an artist to do is to constantly change and and like try to constantly survive and um for me it's a challenge and it's just one of those challenges that i like to do so um but yeah but sometimes you can get caught up you know maybe jumping onto something that you might necessarily not have want to jump on and you just did it because you know um you felt like it was the right thing but it wasn't so yeah you have to kind of watch out for that cool um i think this is a good way to to and unless there's like any other questions, I know we're out of time. Um, but I think it's yeah, we've we've kind of covered a lot of things. Thank you so much, uh, Rob, for for this. It was amazing. Oh no, thank you guys. Honestly, um, if you can, yeah, if, if I can provide anything that helps, that makes me happy. So um, yeah, good luck, good luck to all of you. And I mean, honestly, I'm I'm like a hawk. I'm looking out for pieces all the time to collect. So as well, so you know. <laughs> So I'll be around. <laughs> thank you, Rob. Amazing yeah. to have you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Yeah, thank you guys. Much love. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.